Hello and welcome to The Inverted Castle, a Metroidvania podcast. I'm the Day Witch, Thomas Blight, enemy of the Night Witch, Eric Fox. I, I mean, I come here in my bat fan uh, cosplay, and this is how you treat me? Yep, yep. <sighs> this is how I treat you. Today we're talking about Night Witch, or sorry, The Night Witch. There are met multiple, but we'll get into it. We'll, we'll tell you which night is which. A game by Super Awesome Hyperdimensional Mega Team, um, and published by Team 17. Released last year, at time of recording, 2022, and much like Aquaria, it's a Metroidvania game that eschews normal platforming in favor of omnidirectional 2D movement, this time the sky rather than the sea. Yeah, I didn't actually realize that I was like choosing in a theme and you love platformers you've gone on record as liking this style and then two times in a row when it comes to oh let's pick a game i want to play not at all it's true i don't know i just want to see what people do with doing things differently <laughs> um so the the like the like five second elevator pitch for the night witch is what if a metroidvania was also a shmup yeah, specifically Toho, but there are numerous things that make it a lot unlike Toho in terms of game feel, but if you're just looking at it, it's got enemy bullet patterns that come in waves, you're flying around as a magical girl, and you have spell cards that clear bullets. It's um, There are some similarities. Yeah, that's true. But in terms of the actual gameplay... You, Unlike Toho, it's not a precise, like, bullet-hurting, tiny hitbox game. You're, you're kind of a big body, and it's more about positioning and using, you know, your spells a lot rather than as emergencies. Yeah, and I, I had a bit of a problem in that I apparently have muscle memory. I can't remember the last time I played a Toho game. It's probably 2013. Oh man. Or earlier. Okay, yeah. But I kept trying to just graze through patterns that the main character is too big to fit through. You are playing the game wrong and I will hear nothing about this as far as like that's not the game's fault. It offers you no benefit to graze. Unlike Toho, you don't get points or anything. Well, I wasn't intentionally grazing. I was just trying to go between bullets and being like, "Oh no." I, I don't have a tiny hitbox. Ow, I am dead. Yeah, this this game is more focused on using environment to just block bullets. Fairly early on, you get a dash that can warp between waves. There's that vulnerability period. But mostly it's just you want to have a spell card on hand and the man to cast it to just kind of blast them and just not deal with it at all. Yeah. I don't know. Where should we begin? Story? Gameplay? What do you think? Yeah, let's go story. There's kind of a lot. <laughs> Yeah, it, this is a pretty like interesting story game. Shockingly, at like at first, I did not kn know where it was going. Yeah, so the prologue establishes that there was this industrial powerhouse. I've forgotten all of the proper nouns already. Uh, the Daigadian Empire. Yeah, and they were doing pretty bad stuff to the environment. A Captain Planet villain style thing. Yeah, although they were like a briefly a utopia. It sounded like. Just a utopia where the, the Earth was being destroyed in the process. Utopia from a certain perspective. Yeah, so a force rose up against them called the Children of Gaia, which weren't actually all that effective until the Night Witches came along, yeah. which are basically a superhero team of witches that are also knights, I guess. They fly. They fly, they got magic, they have discrete roles. Yeah, they gain power from people's belief in them. Yep, called the Link. This yes. will come up a lot over this game. Yes, the Link is like the singularly important thing about this setting. So they fight the CEO of Dagadai. <laughs> they crush him, but essentially the damage is irreversible. Yeah. The the sky is shattered. That apparently means that people are just going to burn up. Yeah, there's no more atmosphere, so the surface of the entire planet is uninhabitable. Yeah, but conveniently, 
at the site of their battle, they find a hole. And in the hole, they find Dungeonitis. Dungeonitis, the ruins of a once great civilization. Checkmark, again, for uh, <laughs> something that really happens a lot in these games. It's very convenient to have a, a ruins of an ancient civilization. Then you can explain why people have trouble getting around. Exactly, exactly. So yeah, they basically find a place to escape to them in the last remnants of a humanity in quotes it's actually a bunch of different fantastical races like cyclops and uh demon guys yeah at one point they mentioned that one guy is the last human and i was like wait what 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 race is what race is the main character is she not a human she's a witch she's either a witch or a knight it's different maybe an elf she kind of had big ears it's not clear and not important Thankfully. So this ancient civilization was the Hexkari, some kind of giants that lived underground and got up, up to shenanigans with big machines. Big machines, green goo called Hex Oil, and basically yeah. they all these people live in the Hanging Castle, powered by the machine that basically maintains life. It's a little biodome. Yeah. And then we cut to... <clears throat> The, the modern day, it's... 14 years later. And they're celebrating Robin Day, which is the name of the leader of the Night Witches. And then things go to shit a little bit. Yeah, this is where the game begins, and you were introduced to our main character, Rain. Not to be confused with Robin, this is a lore point. <laughs> but yeah, you are Rain, the unbeknown... The, basically the fifth Night Witch who never really got a chance to join the battle she, for whatever reason was barred from participating. You know, you can still fly. Uh, you still did the ritual, which is, I think, drinking Gaia's tears. But listen, you've had you've been in peace for a while. You've got a husband, so already better than Aquaria, you start with the himbo. <laughs> and man, is he a good himbo. Akai, love him. Oh, what, what a big lug. Builds you a uh, target practice range. Can't get enough of the guy. Yeah. Um, and after this target practice, which serves as the tutorial, the city is attacked by golems. And everyone's like, what? Are the industrialists back? And apparently, yes. The heretofore unknown heir to the Daigadian Empire is basically like, yo, I'm taking control and I'm killing the Night Witches and you can't stop me. And here's my buddy Graf. He's going to do some crap. And he starts laying waste to basically the machine, all the different parts that sustain life of the Hanging Castle, starts uh, capturing citizens, but makes a point of not killing any of them. Yeah, this is for a violent game is surprisingly non-lethal. Even the person that you, you visibly see him kill uh, didn't actually die there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This, this, this game features... A mostly light tone. It has its like quips and winks at the camera and whatnot, but crucially, I think, doesn't hang the lampshade too much and to like actually undercut the story. I feel like, like there's a game recently called Forspoken that got a lot of attention for basically just being <laughs> like too embarrassed about its own story and that made it really hard to like and it made a real cringy dialogue. This one, I th The Night Witch, I think, threads that needle a lot better. It's funny when it needs to be. It's silly, it's charming, but when the drama needs to hit, I think it does. Now, I haven't actually watched very much of Forspoken, but the things that I felt like people were harping on were just like, yeah, this seems like a pretty realistic reaction of someone who was just dropped from, like, high school into a fantasy world. Yeah, I can see that. Like, from what I've seen, I it's not basically it's like okay if i'm going to be playing this game i need to be bought in and if you're going to at every turn have people basically make fun of me for trying to buy in i'm not gonna <laughs> react well we'll say that's fair anyway the main character makes her way to the castle uh, which is the brain of the machine and basically is like hey i i am technically a night witch too how can i help and they're like, great, we don't know where the Night Witches are. Here, do you want to, like, fix stuff? Well, we got missions for you, sure. Here, uh, and take take your hat. It's a very important that a Night Witch has her hat. Yes. And you're basically sworn in as the replacement Night Witch, and you start gaining Link from people as you help them, which is, in this game, how you level up, but also, like, that's 
how you get your powers. It is a source of energy and magic. It is real. Yeah, and there's an interesting thing that comes in in that they have you do press conferences and the media relations person. Yeah, you got a PR guy. Your PR guy wants you to basically like be all sunshine and rainbows and avoid talking about difficult subjects. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that will get you more link. But the the main character is kind of like, mm, maybe I should like be my genuine self and share things that are inconvenient or uncomfortable. But get less link. Yeah. And so thus be less powerful. And like, it's an interesting thing because like you think this game is just like the ecological, you know, uh, environmentalist message. But really, that's kind of more of a backdrop to like what it's actually interested in, which is like media consumption and uh, celebrity culture. So like in this world where being famous and being well liked by the populace is literally powerful. And so it makes sense that, hey, this PR guy is kind of realistically saying, if you want to be strong enough to actually save us, maybe you should, uh, you know, do what you need to for the sake of the greater good. Yeah, it, it's an interesting split between them. I, I don't know. It, I think it does the environmental part a little better in the end than the uh, like fame thing. I, I kept expecting the fame thing to have a little more twist to it. The thing is, uh, yeah, I, I think thematically it works, but when it comes to like what it actually means as far as your experience in the game, getting less link from those doesn't have as much teeth as it should like it doesn't it doesn't actually result in like a harder mode because you can always just it offers you an alternate way to get all that link back by just feeding it money and you end up getting a lot of money (laughs) yeah you end up getting a lot of money the money is not that useful apparently i should have been buying a lot more armor oh yeah 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 you can get temporary armor with with money like one hit and it's gone or however many hits it gets as you level it up but yeah, you're not going to be hurting for money, and especially if you're uh, using other facilities, that just you end up getting exponentially even more money from drops. Like uh, there's there's basically an upgrade path by spending more money, you'll get more money. In this case, there's shards. Yeah, that one was a little funny. But yeah, so like I think I kind of wish there was more of an impact from you know sticking to your guns and playing the harder path, and ultimately it just ends up in a basically a, an end game gauntlet being slightly harder if you were being a, a naughty child and lying for power oh does that actually have an effect it does late in the game when you spoiler alert, get betrayed essentially by these you know the pr people and like the people you've been fighting for turns out a lot of what they've been doing with the night witches is not up to code there's, there's a lot of lore regarding how they formed the night witch team and how much it was just from the jump crafted specifically all their personalities the whole thing of gaining link was all just what they needed to do but it was all artificial in a sense yeah in a like disturbing echo of idol bands yeah 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 like all everything from like how they dress their their name the fact that there was originally going to be five of you but because rain and robin sounded too similar and that they really wanted the former soldier robin to be the leader and the most powerful they decided to let you go and say ah splitting all this power up between five was probably a mistake anyway yeah it's got some some funny echoes of like the the boy band stuff it's like yeah everyone needs to have a distinct personality to appeal to this demographic yeah yeah one of the night witches is just is like a huge former uh, firefighter and th- like one of the notes you can find is that like yeah she really appeals to our uh, diverse body type chart i think she's gonna <laughs> you know test really well so anyway they betray you and they start you know trying to force the populace against you but if you've been honest no one really buys it because you've basically been undercutting them this whole time but if you were have been lying you start losing levels which makes that gaunt- last gauntlet and potential final boss harder but you gain it all back yeah because that last gauntlet was kind of a joke for me uh but i told the truth at all opportunities and then bribed my way to level ups yes same here like i you offer me like oh i can make it harder on myself for potentially a better reward down the line obviously gonna go for it i mean we say that but i did murder everybody in unsighted i mean i'm talking about myself who didn't (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> who specifically, first run, murdered no people. Oh, well, I was just like, oh, these people don't give me anything. Straight to the murder hole. 
Yeah, see, the thing is, yeah, if this game had offered you the opportunity to, instead of rescue people, slaughter them for anti-Link, which is like more, a more powerful Link or something, you would definitely do that, you piece of garbage. Maybe. <laughs> you sack of a man. But anyway, to cut a long story short, after you do all your missions and uh, you kind of meet the other Night Witches who kind of reveal like how they actually are and what's kind of going on, and you have to fight your former mentor, Robin who, since she's been kind of doing her own thing for a while, they didn't like that. Bringing up an interesting thing of, because she, get, she gets her power from people believing in her, she mentions things like, things need to get worse first, so I can become powerful enough to stop this thing. And it turns out the thing she's trying to stop is not the invasion, but rather the existential threat. Yeah, they kind of make it seem in the moment like that's part of the fame monster kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which was kind of nice. In terms of a, a twist of like, oh yeah, you have, you were misinterpreting this because you didn't have all the information she has. Mm -hmm. But yeah, turns out that ancient race, Hexkari, Hexoil, the green goo, that's, uh, that's corpse fluid. And it turns out when you don't let things die right, the life goddess Gaia starts getting weaker. And the chaos god Hex gets stronger, and he's coming and... Y'all are gonna, y'all gonna have to take care of that. Yeah, which ironically means that, as I understand it, the entire like prologue conflict doesn't really matter. No, it was already kind of on its way. That was like the events kind of led to the discovery of this place and you know where the great evil might have come from. But yeah, like I'm sure it wasn't great for the survival of the earth. But it 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 kind of seems like the people on the surface were not the pro the most important problem. I think it was just it was just a separate, different existential threat. Like, listen, it was bad up there, and the like a uh, Daigadian Empire, the techno people, they're already kind of like, listen, we were well on our way to leaving this hunk of junk planet for space exploration until you dumb witches <laughs> kept destroying our factory. So now we're all doomed. It's your fault. And yeah, it's, it, I, I kind of liked that bit of, you know, motivation. Yeah. The, at least the attempt to, to throw that in, in their faces. Yeah. It's like cl they're cl clearly still wrong, but it, you know, it's just like, man, fuck these people, but also, oh, I don't know. It, yeah, it, they weren't just evil or blind, but they were definitely bad dudes who <laughs> clearly didn't care about most people. Yeah. And speaking of space, there are parallels there with, oh, geez, I've forgotten the name of the NPC. What is the name of the, the creator NPC? The creator NPC. Like, actually kind of the villain, it turns out. Oh, a Lalashi? Yeah. Yeah, Lalashi. Lalashi. Or, yeah, Lalashi. There's no voice acting, so who whomst could say? Yeah, so Lalashi is basically doing the same thing as Dagadai. It's like, okay, well, we've got this stuff. It's sweet. Yeah, she discovers, like, the what she can do with the hex oil, the, you know, corpse goo, and is basically like, well, we can extend this to really make things great. And also, I have don't like Night Witches. Link, bad power. Hate it. Can't Can't rely on it. Green goo? That's the, that's the moneymaker. And yeah, she basically organizes that whole fake revolution and attacks on the castle to gain it, gain like trust and entry into it and then uh, the ability to extend it. Yeah, which it was kind of funny when they do the reveal that um, she's the, the, the man behind the man. Mm -hmm. uh, I was like, wait, who are you? Oh yeah, you showed up at the beginning, and then you've had like one line since then. Uh, there, there had been other like you can always talk to her in the castle between missions, and right before you leave for the like to take care of the main bad guy who you assumed at the time, she gives you that the shield. She has like this little suspicious meeting with the leaders. There, there was the reminder of who she was, but yeah, I just I don't know. She wasn't enough of a character outside of those things. I was just like, okay, yeah, this is this is your cue. Moving on, yeah. and then she like, I don't know, wasn't enough of a focus. So I was just like, oh, okay, this is actually the bad guy, huh? Neat. But then also, she's really just like another player in making things worse inadvertently. Yeah. <laughs> like Robin is real was really kind of a the more antagonistic antagonist than the one you really fight before the the end game and end god. Yeah. So like Robin is definitely the 
like fame plot antagonist and the, the like personal antagonist yeah and then Balashi is just kind of there doing the like environmentalism problem yeah she, she's just a little shit disturber i don't know it worked for me i like it it's it's not like this game is so long that it, like any given character like of any given character she gets more screen time than most yeah i don't know i she gets more screen time than calypso the the heir to the Dagendian throne. Yeah, because I had found some of the notes fairly early on, I thought we were building up to one of the venerable, or I've forgotten the PR guy's name, being the ultimate villain. Oh, it's N. So yeah. <laughs> you got the venerable who likes to be called Ven, and then you got the PR guy N. Uh, don't get confused. So like, yeah, there, there are those messages sequestered around, which you later find out are the Venerable's like secret blackmail on N. Yeah, essentially. Like they're all N's notes on the creation of the original Night Witch team and all the secrets and like how this can never get out. The fact that Link is not tied to just the Night Witches, anyone can. And there's a little mention of, man, if any, if everyone found out, they'd be like, it'd be so dangerous. Everyone would just be concerned about gaining followers and doing crazy things for fame. Wouldn't that be crazy? Ha ha ha, looks at Twitter. <laughs> Yeah. Or I guess TikTok now. Sorry, I'm over 30. I, I don't I don't understand anymore. I mean, I feel like the real thing is to have someone playing this on Twitch and then they just look into the camera. They look directly into the camera. Yeah. And then somebody gives them a, a subscription and they thank them. <laughs> and then we move on. Yo, thanks for the bits. <laughs> thanks for the shards. But yeah, no, they, that's more set up for lore and like it. They, these guys do betray you, and then they you could say that the, when you're trying to fight back to the castle and get to the, the machine to shut it down because, hey, it's got a lot of hex oil. That stuff is summoning the terrible god. Gotta stop it, and they resist you. That's that boss fight is versus them, but instead of, they can't fight, so they send robots. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. Yeah, robot clones of the night witches, in fact. Yes. Yeah, no. I don't know. Again, I, I thought it worked for me as that being that conflict, and then it eventually it ends up that you drop the whole castle into the the abyss where the god's trying to claw out, and you get a choice of ending. You can walk away and leave it for someone else to fix. Yep, making essentially history repeat itself of Lalashi basically taking over and trying to get people into space while there's a, a pocket group of resistance to it, basically fighting the robot army, trying to get humanity, again in quotes, to the stars and away from this hell planet. Yeah, and people start entombing their dead in the same way the Hexakari did it. Yeah, 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 because they need more of that oil now. They, they can't just rely on dead giants. Uh, <laughs> more grist for the mill. Or you can have a very difficult boss fight and deal with it yourself because, damn it, no one else will, and you're the only one who can do it right. Which is yep. a much more, um, I guess, optimistic ending, where you as Rain fight the darkness, meet Gaia in the f flesh, and basically agree to take over for her as the next Earth goddess. But not right now. You're, you're, you're cool to live out the rest of your mortal life, and then once that's over, you know, ascend, which is yeah. nice. It, it, wasn't, it wasn't a bittersweet ending so much as it best of both worlds. And so, yeah, you get to, you get to have the life with your himbo husbando. <laughs> who turns out to be like crouching badass yeah I... um he is a, apparently a former bodyguard to the big bad son or sorry big bad by i mean dagadai yeah not the big bad it, again the, 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 there's a the lot that prologues happens Prologue's big bad Prologue's big bad dagadai and army the setup he was a general who defected because he realized that hey this is this is all crap and we're gonna die which is cool, yeah. but yeah, that's mostly what it. What the story was again, flitting about, cutting out a lot of the incidental dialogue and stuff, and like all the characters you free will then hang around the castle you can talk to, uh, depending on whether you're honest or not. They'll have different dialogue for you. Yeah, uh, but I don't know. Like again, it, the moment to moment of the you know all the cutscenes, the hanging out. The characters, I thought, worked well. It was charming enough without being too lampshade hanging, uh, yeah. except for one character who was just the <laughs> justification for collectibles, <laughs> Dr. Y or uh, Yuppie Lord. Oh, yeah. And also, like, kind of implied to be a developer insert? Essentially, yeah. 
Uh, I haven't looked up who's on Super Awesome Hyper Dimensional Mega Team to see if there's someone who's just like, yep, that's him. Damn, did you just bust out the studio name off the top of your head? I still have the page open, so it's not, <sighs> oh, I can not cut that. technically off the top of my well, head. We can cut that out. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Uh, yeah, he's, like, he's in just this room all his own, and he's just a constant, like, a fourth wall breaking jokes guy. Yeah. Which, again, since they sequestered him al- alone, it doesn't really break the narrative. It's He's just a weird guy, and he, he totally called me out by saying, like, you're one of those guys who, once you see the main path, immediately turn around and head the other direction, aren't you? And I'm like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he's also one of your mechanisms for getting new cards. His is sort of a booster pack type choose one of three very hearthstone-esque for arena yeah so yeah every time you pump enough of his collectible coins in you can add to your deck or yeah and the other way is by killing bosses or by finding treasure chests yeah and you'll get new spells Uh, you only get one copy but you can then clone them by spending money and the more you clone and spend money you get multipliers to how much money you get from killing dudes which in turns lets you clone more and get more money and you're not going to be hurting. You you will be flush with cash. Yeah, like very early on, I think there was one time that I, because I was telling the truth the whole time, that I didn't have enough money to flip the thumbs down to a thumbs up yeah. and buy everything. Yeah. Uh, but then pretty much after that, it was not an issue at all. Yeah, and this is also helped by the fact that anytime you die, you keep all your money that you earned on the way there. Yeah, and I died a lot. <laughs> Yeah, it's a, there are very specific points in this game where you'll get ambushed by enemies, and it's a hard battle. Most of the hardest ones are technically optional, but still, if, you're not, if you don't have a good spell deck and not prepared, and eventually you also have to learn the wave patterns of which enemies are spawning and which things you need to save. Like, you have one spell that clears bullets as well as is a melee attack. Really good, yeah. but cost half your mana or all of it if you're really early on yeah the axe was great the axe never left the axe never left my deck i i don't know early on i was like the axe is too expensive i'm gonna go with all of the cheaper things i that was a mistake i think uh uh, maybe it wasn't for at the time when i only had three mana maximum yeah but like yeah so there is a pseudo deck builder element to this where you'll have more cards than you can fit in your mind at one time, let's say. And so you basically just pick and choose what you want to be able to draw, and it'll just keep cycling out as you use them. There's not a whole lot in terms of hidden synergies. Mostly, they if it, if they benefit with something like, hey, this upgrades your main attack, and this other thing doubles your main attack, those two work well. Yeah, and there are, I don't know, I never actually tried this build but i I was like this seems like it could be interesting there's a a build of the raven yes which shoots a seeking sword every time you cast a spell and there's also discard frenzy which lets you discard a card to do nothing but it still counts as casting a spell yep one of the problems with trying to assemble those kinds of things is that if you have a spell that has a persistent effect which except for the weapons i guess uh, the weapons don't work the same exactly the same way Mm -hmm. that card occupies that slot until its effect is done which really limits your combo ability when you're like so okay setting up your combo of two things that are persisting now you have one card to work with and you better have the mana yeah you better have the mana you better hope that you didn't draw your other copy of one of those two yeah and the way you get mana is by using your main attack um which is you it will auto fire and auto target if you don't you know pick a direction with the right stick if you do try and manually aim, you'll get a bit more damage out of it, but generally I found it was more useful either trying to upgrade with a spell or just a constant barrage to, you know, generate more mana, because it's not on kill, but on hit, there's a percent chance to drop a mana sphere. That's yeah. how you get it back. And as you level up, you can get either, you know, more frequent shots or better drops on mana. Like better percentage drop yeah and i thought having the enemies drop those on being hit makes for somewhat of an interesting game design in that you pretty much always want to be moving towards the enemies yes i i actually like this a lot is you you cannot just hang back forever you will eventually need to duck in at least for a recharge before ducking out so and that's what made the melee 
clear all bullets and also deal a lot of damage acts really good for yeah. when you get in there make it safe make it count and then you're back out and you can uh you, you just refilled so go with god i actually tried to use the there's a, a card that lets you collect things that i expected it to be longer ranged i was hoping it was basically going to be hey collect everything on the screen so that i could um like set up some of the man mana and then collect it from afar oh but it doesn't grab mana it doesn't grab it from very far away. Oh, so you still need to kind of get in there. And so I was like, well, at that point, why aren't I just getting in there properly? Yeah, because you can chain your blink dashes pretty effectively. Yeah, so I had a pretty rough go of it near the start. I, in hindsight, probably choosing the wrong cards because I, like, I, I was trying to go really low to the ground. Yeah, this is also before you get your dodge, and that, like, honestly, that's kind of like the big game changer. So yeah. Yeah, I, it was very hard to dodge things before actually having access to the dodge. Uh, like I said, I kept trying to weave in between things that were totally reasonable to weave in between if I were playing a Toho game. Yep. Uh, but in this one, your uh, your body is pretty tall in particular. It's the hat. It's a big hat. Yeah. And so I uh, there's a lot of times that I just ate hits that I probably could have like waited another couple seconds and they would have just gone around me kind of thing yeah you're also kind of incentivized i think to when you come to the heart containers of this game you can either get more mana or more health and as much as you want to play with toys gaining health early on is probably the way to go yeah gaining mana i don't know gaining mana is also has it has an interesting thing in that yeah they add cards to your deck yeah it's actually a downgrade anyone who's played a tcg would know that you want as, as thin a deck list as possible so you always pick the answers you want and so when you get a larger deck size you have to fill it all up you can't just leave blank spaces so you end up kind of if you don't have enough good stuff unfortunately that makes it less consistent which is worse but hey you have more mana Yay. Yeah, I, I wonder if getting mana was just too good and that's why they decided to do that potentially like I'm not like it's it's a weird thing but it's an interesting decision if nothing else um it does basically force you to start playing with more stuff until you yeah. get cards like the zero cost gain one mana card which is essentially just a deck filler yeah you, you can always you can always pop that that's great and that that also composed pretty well with the crow i did try that build oh yeah i tried that build for a while and then i don't know i hit a brick wall at some point ultimately i didn't like not having the the three cost axe because for that build uh you want to pump it up with uh you know the cheap stuff but yeah. I ended up not being as good and not being able to choose what the swords home in on kind of screws you at times. Yeah, that's fair. When you they've got like the little minions that you have to uh, <laughs> shoot through and it'll keep going for the little minions instead of the enemy spawner. Yeah, they essentially have like Mega Man style barriers of just like just a wall of like not bullets, but actual like things that will block your own shots so like your normal gun will never break through because they'll keep spawning more you have to like overpower them with something yeah i mean usually if you can dodge long enough you will actually get through with your regular gun yeah it just takes forever and then you won't get your goodie for beating the ambush fast enough yeah i never went back and tried to get all of those so there's two two goodies there's flawless for not getting hurt yep even if you have armor uh getting hit will still disqualify you oh wow yeah even then Ugh. um <laughs> and then doing it fast enough i got a handful of those just coincidentally and i was like i i don't do not love these ambushes enough to play this longer i i did consider it like because i did and I, I feel like I did enjoy it more than you seem to just by your tone but there are just so many by the end of the game and because the reward for it would have only served to help with like any additional ambushes like you only need to get 25 out of I don't know 27 30 something like that it, it just didn't seem worth it from a time perspective yeah we, I got a lot of other games I want to play but <laughs> early on like the first time one happened and it just like I just happened to not take damage and then I saw that oh there's a reward for this that I've already missed from previous ambushes 
and it wasn't clear that there's going to be a way to refight them. I kind of had that, it was a bit of a sinking feeling of either there's something I've missed or this doesn't matter. Either way, I need to put it out of my head. I kind of knew that there would be a way to replay them. Yeah. Though I didn't actually figure out what it was. Just uh, there was an NPC that tells you that you can, not how to do it. Do you still not know? Did you not look it up? Nope. Okay, so when you get the cat upgrade, the cat upgrade being a little, uh, you can place them down and then spells come from it instead of you. There's a few puzzles that rely on it. If you put that out in front of the dog NPC, it gets real uppy about it. And then it like regains his fighting spirit or something. I don't know. It's it's a weird interaction, but basically then the dog will be able to join you and the dog will basically, <laughs> again, this doesn't really make a lot of sense outside of it just being the gameplay explanation, but yeah, he'll start barking when you're in a room with an ambush and you can try it again at that point. Just interact uh, with the little uh, warp icon. Yep. Did not do that. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't find the cat very useful beyond the like obligatory puzzles that used it like in ambushes i i was not using it i guess maybe if i were going for some of those speed things there would be a time when i would want it yeah i'm not sure if i'm just not uh, smart enough or i just didn't try and look for the right spell that would work well with it but the cat only ever screwed me over like i i would forget that i placed the cat down and then wonder why my axe didn't do anything <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it was, I mean, there was one boss that I found it useful for, which is the, the mech. Yeah. Where I just placed the cat in front of the mech, and then all of my spells are going to come out of that cat, so... And you can focus on dodging? Yeah. Yeah, I think by the time I got the cat, I was just too used to being aggro, and so I, I never wanted to, like, retreat, but I think you're right in the sense that you can be safe and have spells come out, but because of the way mana's used, you're going to have to come back out eventually just to be able to cast spells from the cat what i bet it, it it's for in good play is stuff like okay so i place the cat and then i go take out this wave on the other side of the screen and get mana to then use the spells from the cat to um, kill the other wave and then i take the cat out and place it back where i am now and go that like essentially yeah. to be able to be in two places at once with an aoe over there and my regular attack possibly with weapons over here. That sounds really cool. I, I never felt the need to do anything that crazy, It really. Yeah, it, it's something that I maybe would have started looking into if I was trying to get the speed challenges. Speed right? challenges or just trying to speed run the game in itself. I'm sure that there's a lot of efficiency it can handle. Like if you yeah. know where enemies are going to spawn after you handle these guys, just have the cat already there, ready to go. It'd be nice. Yeah. But. So other upgrades, there's the dash. The dash is so good. Which has invincibility frames. Yep, it goes through hazards, walls, bullets. It's pretty fast. If you can get the timing right, I think it's the fastest way to move about the world. Yeah, I was actually pretty frustrated when they gave you the dash and then immediately put you in a level where you can't use it because I, you're in submarines. I, knew, I noticed that too. This game has a water level. When you beat it, the Steam Achievement is the water level. It's <laughs> most of it, takes, at least most of the challenging parts, most of the ambushes where you fight the robots all take place inside the submarine where you cannot use the dash, nor can you fire upwards only horizontally. Yeah. It's, it's gun is pretty good, but again, it was a very weird choice that it's one of the things I don't really agree with as far as design goes. Yeah, I mean, it's an interesting set of limitations. Yeah. Changing you from being able to shoot in any direction to now you can only shoot left or right. And you need to use things in the environment that will like basically redirect your shots or activate and start turret firing in a different direction. Like I think individually all those things were good. It was just the, the fact that it's the second main area and you just got the best upgrade in the game and not being able to use it felt bad yeah there's also a sword i was really disappointed by the sword yeah it's it takes too long to wind up it has no range it's essentially just acts activates switches that won't respond to anything else i don't know i i mean maybe it'll turn out if you look at someone speed running it or something that the sword is useful because like if you can weave Getting in there and slicing people with the sword yep. in, it ups your damage per there, second or something, yeah. right? There's an achievement for killing a stunned enemy with it. So like, I think it's very powerful. It's just such a long windup that the risk-reward doesn't seem worth it. It's like, you, you got a sword, and everyone likes getting a sword, but it just didn't seem useful enough like yeah. from the jump that it kind of just... I. 
kind of forgot it was there as as soon as combat <laughs> starts. It's it it was just a a traversal thing. Yeah, it it kind of ends up just functioning as a key. Mm-hmm. And we we hate when things are glorified keys, right? Yeah, they tried. But they tried. It, it's funny to me because I feel like when it, something's a sword, you'd expect it to have more combat utility than key utility and this is definitely like the the, the opposite. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's the opposite of a key blade, which was <laughs> very rarely a key, mostly a blade. They did some locking and unlocking. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, they un- yeah, they put it in people and unlocked their death. Yeah, they also locked the hearts of the worlds to keep them safe from heartless. Okay, so I just I just had a premonition of the future where we keep talking about Kingdom Hearts lore and <laughs> we're already 50 minutes into this. So, I'm going to Pump the brakes on this guy and try and cha- transition somewhat neatly into like the divergent builds that you can do because it's an, you're a knight witch knight path and witch path and every time you level up you can choose one of either one this is both yeah. for hard containers so like you know the knight path is health which is mana but on level ups from link you get more passive upgrades to things like rate, rate of fire damage on your main attack on the night side with mana sp- spawning spell damage stuff like that on the witch side and i because i wanted to play with my toys more i tended to favor the witch side yeah i stayed pretty neutral but like at some point i realized that eh i'm probably better off getting more mana and better spells than i am doing the the night side yeah the night side can benefit you by just upping your rate of fire which just mathematically gives you more mana but i didn't feel like your main weapon was worth upgrading, but I think it also applies to your spell weapons, which, like, you can change it to a machine gun or a triple shot or the ghost gun, which is just, yeah. it fires a bunch of homing bullets that pass through terrain. It's the last thing you get, and it's the best. Yeah, the ghost gun is ridiculous. The, the it, ghost gun wins the game. It's bar none. It's what you need to do. <laughs> yeah, I was actually kind of disappointed in that once I got it, I felt like it warped my entire strategy about, is the ghost gun up? Yeah, that is what happened when I was trying to fight the final boss. I was just really struggling, and then I'm just like, okay, well, the ghost gun seems to be doing the best, so I took out everything except ghost gun and things that can get me the ghost gun. <laughs> oh yeah, discard? Sure. Ma- more mana? Got it. Ghost gun? Play it. Yeah. Dragon? Oh, that's just double ghost gun. Yeah, that's just another ghost gun. It's great. Yeah, I felt like that overshadowed any builds that I had been doing before for the, the end game. Yeah, if it if the end game was easier, like I think you could probably just like muddle through with whatever you found more, more fun. But this is one of those things where like once you realize the most efficient path and when the most efficient path isn't particularly interesting, that's a bit of a downer. But thankfully, they do withhold it for all of the game essentially so yeah it would be useful if you want to actually go back and do all your ambushes again because you'd be able to get the speed (laughs) yeah yeah maybe that's just an easy answer to to doing the speed stuff i mean between that and the fact that this game has honest to god cheats that's true i never tried them yeah you you can do either like the yeah there's a part in the menu that just says cheats it with an honest to god cheat input you enter in a four digit code of four different like runes and if you just guess at the pattern right you can unlock it that way or obviously use the internet i don't think there's any in-game hints towards it but maybe i just wasn't paying enough attention but you can do things like have infinite mana have your gun last until you transition screens die in one hit an anti-cheat stuff like that or have just slower bullets as a bit of an accessibility option as well so if that if yeah. that's something important to you, it, like you can do it. It's a bit more hidden than something like Celeste uh, assist mode, and definitely not as robust. But I kind of like I I thought that was a charming addition. I it's been a while since I've seen a <laughs> cheat menu. It's great. Yeah, I mean we played Banjo Tooie. We did play Banjo Tooie. That one, yeah, had the in-game version of this where you actually had to find the cheat pages and enter the code in-game. But that's true. Yeah, that's also (laughs) what twenty-year-old game. (laughs) That's fair. So prior to running exclusively Ghost Gun, what I was doing was I I don't know what to call it other than like the I guess Novas. So the the axes, which are great. The the lightning bolts, which are also great. Yep, hit above and below you. Yeah, the the ball and chain hits left and right of you, but it's essentially the lightning. Yeah, 
I can't actually remember what else was in there. I think I was using the Raven anyway, just because I had spare mana. Oh, really? I like w- once I found the just the mana uh, plus one mana. I was just like, okay, cool. I can just do what I actually want more. But I think I also had the explosion. Yeah, right. That's what I was using. Yes, and the Inferno, uh, the Inferno, and because everything I had was three or greater i was using the ones that cost three and make the next one free makes sense you're either gonna go neutral or better yeah i had a couple of the triple homing knife spells i found them situationally useful to just stun a guy and keep going if i didn't really want to fight so it's kind of dumb i found that ridiculously late really that was like that was like one of the first things i found as an upgrade i somehow just like didn't notice it in the first time through and found that at the point where I was like, okay, so this is time for the the roundup of things before the end, right? Right, right, yeah. It, it, it... Which was actually only going to the surface. Oh, okay. But like at that point, pretty much everything was findable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that, like by that point, you don't really have anything that's gating you beyond like an actual like story progression. You can't get to the catacombs. Yeah, they... They gave me the spell kitty, and I turned right around and solved a bunch of puzzles. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. So, yeah, no wonder you didn't like the game. You didn't have the triple blades. Oh. Yeah, I don't know. I just, like, I also found it kind of obnoxious to backtrack here, which is funny, because I feel like you're the one who usually complains about backtracking. Usually I wait to the very, very, very end. Otherwise, stick to the main path till I, you know, think it's efficient. So, like, it wasn't that bad, because also this game ha- does have an in in-universe, in-game mechanic of marking on the map where something is that you haven't gotten yet. So it wasn't that bad, but the fast travel system did leave a bit to be desired in that you can only go to the hub and otherwise you do like you can't warp within the different zones yeah and then at like near the end of the game i don't actually know what unlocked it you start being able to go back to the hub or the start of any of the areas i believe it was Oh man, was it getting the new shield, basically remote thing to get back to the surface? I can't, I can't remember, but yeah, late in the Maybe. game you can warp back to like again the beginning of any zone from however deep you are in the levels, but you can't warp within levels, and they're pretty big. And yeah, and also on the switch, which was where I was playing it, the oh, loading no. times were ridiculous. Okay. I played I mean, the PC version. It was fine. No problems. They were fine, but they were definitely not like progressively loading and unloading rooms in front of you to make sure that you oh, no. uh, aren't going to face a loading screen. There's just in between the like first town area and the market, there is a hard load. Oh, yeah, yeah. That lasted at least 15 seconds. I don't know, maybe longer. I'd... Yikes. Time enough that I was able to go play on my phone. <laughs> Enough you had to supplement your experience with bonus game. Yeah. That's unfortunate. I mean, not bonus game, but like... Sure, check Facebook or whatever, I don't know. Check Reddit. I played on PC, did not have that problem at all. I'm sorry, you played the wrong (laughs) version. Yeah. Guess that means you also didn't get the splash screen that said this game is best played on a controller? No. Yeah. Was it a good splash screen? I mean, it basically just, it was just a, you know, stylized image of of a controller saying like, hey, yeah, the play it on a controller assuming that you'd be at the very least you know curious about using the mouse and keyboard but given how much this game doesn't actually rely on precise aiming and more on having access to like all of, like your all your spell card buttons dash what have you uh definitely definitely agree unlike aquaria controller is the way to go yeah Uh, on the switch i found it a little odd i don't know i felt like it was just a little too zoomed out at all times okay just by virtue of it having a smaller screen or i i get like i mean i was playing it docked and and i played a little little undocked undocked was a little hard to play because you're also using the shoulder buttons right yeah yeah which reminds me i remapped a lot of the controls oh did you yes in particular i did not care for for the guiding light oh i mean i just didn't use the guiding light and oh so the guiding light is on minus yeah that would that'd be it and i would much prefer a map there so i swapped that i swapped oh, the okay. shoulder triggers uh because they put the actual trigger on the spell kitty and the sword right okay and the bumper on dash and shoot yeah and i found the actual triggers much more comfortable to press okay i actually am the opposite i prefer the bumpers over the triggers for at least my 
PC controller, so... I think on a PS4 controller, I do prefer the bumpers over the triggers, but on the Switch, I prefer the triggers over the bumpers. Yeah. And the guiding light is just a thing that, you know, just just to explain what that even is, just points you to wherever the next story beat is, like not the pathway there, but just, you know, relative to where you are, you know, up and to the right somewhere, and then you can find your path yourself. But, you know, useful if you get lost, I guess. But uh, I believe the map is just on one of the D-pad directions, and I was fine with that. Yeah, I, I don't know. It's just way more inconvenient on the switch to press that than to hit minus okay well you should have switched platforms instead (laughs) i i don't know like this is again a lot of these complaints are on you yeah i i don't know the something about the the zoom level and it was even worse undocked that that would be yeah this is this is too small for the screen that i'm trying to play it on to sit closer and and yet the main character is huge and the uh, the enemy's shots are pretty huge too i don't know how to explain like why i just didn't have this problem at all i i don't know it's just a sense i got like i don't know if they did resolution differently on the switch version because again didn't play that one but like from where i was sitting in relation to my monitor super good all good resolution's fine like it does tend to like zoom in and out on like you know depending on how big whatever room you're in is and but that it was, it was only ever minor and always ever kind of worked so again all i can say is not me in general did you like the exploration component of the game i mean yes like by exploration like i guess like the like puzzles you need to like work through or just the act of flying around the the act of flying around encountering enemies i thought it was mostly fine the the dungeon delving part the dungeon delving part like you know uh i thought the level design was mostly good like uh as far as like being like passing through the same areas but like from different directions different like styles i know there's a play- part early on in the plant zone the f- the first main mission where you have basically four different places you can go to, pick any one, and depending on whether or not you get the dash early or late will really change one of the pathways. It really, You can either like basically skirt around all the enemies, but if you don't have the, the dash, you've got to fight. And I thought that was a neat thing to realize I'd already gotten the dash, so I was able to do it easily, but there weren't a lot of places like that. I don't know. It's it's one of those things where like it, was, it wasn't like the main thing I was enamored with, I guess, but it didn't rub me the wrong way. There wasn't enough friction for me to yeah. start actively disliking it. I was getting frustrated with it. I, <laughs> I, I don't know. I was apparently just not very good at dodging in those small corridors oh. and was at some point just like i just want to get through this to get to the parts that i do actually like which is the actual bosses the ambushes <laughs> i was medium on i guess depending on how well i was doing at them i, I kind of like the ambushes better than most of the bosses actually oh really <laughs> yeah I, I, I like the swarm even even though they're the ones that actually made me have to retry several times i don't know like a lot of the bosses are semi reused, uh, or there's not a lot of them until like the end stretch. But I, I don't know. I, I liked the the horde ambushes a lot more because yeah. each each one did feel different in in terms of like the enemy variety and the stage you're actually playing in will usually have some gimmick or placement of platforms and environmental hazards. I, I didn't get tired of them, which I imagine a lot of people might. But shrug, I don't care. <laughs> yeah, I I don't know. It's just. That was how I felt about it. I yeah. I really liked the bosses. I was a little disappointed when I ended up taking out Final Robin very quickly. I was like, aw, Robin <laughs> was my favorite fight. Yeah, you do get to fight Robin a couple of times, and she is the Toho boss, fittingly yeah. enough. Like, if, if, if you look at, you know, any boss in this game, that's the one where you it's very clear uh, in terms of, like, she's the bullet pattern one, big sc- on-screen attacks. That That is the exception to my role, which was... That's a, that was a fun boss. I'm glad to fight her twice, normal and super powered. I assume you had Ghost Gun. Yeah, at, um, Hex Robin. Yeah. yeah. Did do you already have a Ghost Gun by then? I think so. I you'd have to, yeah. I don't know. It went very quickly, and I was like, <laughs> oh, huh. Hmm. Yeah, that's a bit disappointing, but yeah, you know, whatever. I get, I didn't use the Ghost Gun on her at that point. I was still trying to keep away from it. But I broke at the final the final boss. In particular, when I got to Underlake, I think is when I, just, I, I don't know, I was not getting good Aww. about dodging the enemy shots or something. And I was just like, I know I am hating this right now. Oh, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, this, this isn't one where I can just say, yeah, it's kind of, I, I don't know. It, it is a difficult game if you're not 
actively not getting hit. You don't have a lot of health even if you do go down that upgrade path. It is somewhat uh, helped by the fact that you can just buy armor most places. Talk to skeletons, they'll bake you up some armor, I'm not kidding. <laughs> yeah, that was an odd inclusion. It's just a silly bit of things, he, th called the un the underbaker. Yeah. But the fact that if you die, the checkpoints can be pretty far away. Yep. Again, it's like, I, I didn't have trouble, even if e either just fighting my way through or, you know, just stunning and moving on, just dashing past, picking my fights, I guess, and like learning where pe people are so I'd be ready for it. But again, I just, that's the kind of style that I doesn't bother me. At least it didn't. I, I don't know. There, there was, there was definitely a point in the, the like under lake where I was definitely struggling to, to get through the regular enemies to get to an ambush and then struggling with the ambush mm. and then dying and just being like, Ugh. Ugh. even if I buy armor, I'll have lost it by the time I get to this ambush. You, you, can't you can't just run past enemies like you would in Dark Souls? Yeah, I think I did need to fix my build at that point too. Um, and once I fixed my build, it got a lot better. And you do need to at least include some cards that are better dealing with like not so much ambushes, but you know, uh, being able to hit things through walls a lot. Uh, that's what the daggers are really good at was just taking pot shots at guys before they're a problem. That's fair. Yeah, I wasn't using the daggers very much and didn't have the three daggers because I'm silly. <laughs> um, so, But it really... You, maybe that's half the problem. Maybe, but it also sounds like you weren't having a great deal of fun in like, what is essentially most of the game, which is unfortunate because yeah. I was. I had a great time. I really liked this game. I this, Once I got into it, it was just a couple of sessions, bingo, bango. I don't know. I thought it was well-paced as far as like in terms of length and how much it really expects out of you. I don't know. Again... There are a few things I wish were done better. Certain ambushes that were definitely kind of fucked for where you can, how early you can fight them. <laughs> but also, again, optional. But I don't know. <sighs> yeah. Um, one of the somewhat odd things was also in the Underlake. <laughs> everything, everything sucks in the water level. <laughs> yeah. Apparently. I mean, this isn't even the the actual lake itself. This is the the like second half. Yeah. Yeah. Right, which isn't a water level. Yeah, for the mo yeah, it's, it takes place under the water, not what you're thinking. <laughs> yeah, the introduction of the bombs, which is just like, oh, here's this random mechanic. That's weird. Probably something that you're intended to find when you're doing a like grand backtracking after having been to the catacombs, maybe. Yeah, you you see these things that can be blown up if you have the fuse in your inventory and you find fuses throughout the game world, but there's like a couple in the very, very, very final dungeon, which you oh, get and go back. Sorry, I mean, there is the bomb fuses thing, but I mean the red eye orb guys that explode. Oh, those bombs. Okay. Yeah. And that, I could see that that was gating access to a health or mana upgrade at a point where I was struggling through the game, but also like didn't understand the mechanics of how these bomb guys worked yet because that was the first time I've ever seen them. Yeah, I'm coming, kind of coming up at a blank. Like, I think I know what the guys you're talking about, but I just don't understand the issue with dealing with them. Like, how do you need to get past them, I guess? So it was, and I think I couldn't even actually access that in hindsight. I think you needed the spell kitten Okay. in that particular instance. Oh! So there's, yeah, you have to get a bomb to drop and then get it to follow you around a corner far enough to blow up a barrier. Yes, okay. So that you can then put the spell kitty at that spot and open one of okay, the yeah. electricity doors. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, this was an environmental puzzle. They just keep spawning bombs, and when you're near enough to them, they'll home in on you. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. With that being my first encounter with them, I smacked my head against that a lot. Um... Yeah. Um, and, and took damage from the bombs and died and then had to fight my way there, possibly dying again. Yeah, I vaguely recall, like, it was tough to get the, like, to act, like to do the actual thing, to maneuver in a way that you don't get hit by the bombs, but get them where they need to go. But yeah. I, th I don't know, I just kind of, like, like you, got far enough into it, realized, oh, it o opens a thing I don't know how to interact with yet, and then left. But I did get the fact that yeah, there's certain walls are only blown up by these guys, so I don't know. Yeah. It was, it was, like, again, like that's a mechanic that gets used a lot more in the catacombs, but still, again, like, it, it's so weird to hear, like, things about that I just, like, I can't really defend so much as I just didn't have a problem. <laughs> it's just like, yeah. oh yeah, no, know. that that seemed like a perfectly normal challenge, and you're like, it was a challenge too far. <laughs> so, 
Your mileage may vary to put the most milk toast opinion on it. I don't know. Maybe I'm just salty. Like again, like this this is one of the things where if the game's doing enough things right, these things don't matter and kind of add texture to it. But if you're already in a bad mood, extra straws don't really help the camel. <laughs> That's fair. To torture a metaphor. But in better news, I uh, how'd you feel about the game's soundtrack? We don't often talk about, you know, music unless it's like really front and center like in uh, Aquaria, but this one I felt had a really nice folk thing which went well with the fact that like this game is about creating a folklore in the sense artificially. I liked it mostly. There's one particular I should really remember what kind of guitar that is. A uh, sample that just reminds me of why can't I think of the name? Darren Korb. Darren Korb. I don't know. That that one uh like guitar riff sample gets used a ton in bastion yeah yeah it's like every fight and so i can't hear it without thinking of bastion that's i don't know i this is also a thing that like people have gotten on like my brother my brother and me's case of like oh you, hey you used the bastion guitar and it's like no that's not a bastion reference that's just one of the samples in garage Band oh, okay i don't know so they used the bastion guitar and you hate it okay <laughs> No, it was fine. It it just inherently reminds me of Bastion, especially because of that Griffin McElroy rant. Gotcha, about gotcha. How it reminds people of Bastion. Bastion's a good game, and I like being reminded of it. It didn't trigger that in me clearly, but I I don't know. Like I felt the at the very least the main castle theme like had this like chill, you know, somber folk, you know, acoustic guitar kind of uh, sound, which when it got lyrics in the end credits, I think really kind of paid off. Like, I didn't expect in a game as silly and kind of tongue-in-cheek as this to actually be like, oh yeah, Night Witch, mm. yeah. It was, uh, it, was, it was a nice emotional beat that I, you know, was only powerful enough because I'd been hearing that music throughout the entire game. And I liked it. I like music. Yeah. Get off yeah. my back, Dad. I don't know. I liked the... I can't describe it anything as anything other than the the shit's going down music yeah when when uh, the ambush happens and when the ambush happens like visually it's just like this huge s klaxons going off a uh, big like warning tape over the screen just like hey <laughs> bad stuff happening here it comes get ready go dumb complaint oh god <laughs> what else is new i felt like the moving skull things were a little too much to block egg entrances was a little too much visual noise for trying to dodge various things i had the opposite problem where they weren't clear enough and i kept thinking i could move through them oh <laughs> but yes yeah uh, when you get into an ambush and can no longer move there'll just be this like wispy s skull wall that <laughs> is either too big or too small somehow both at the same time yeah but it is the same color as say bullets and enemies spawning in so I, I i get what you're saying yeah and like i don't know i'm really bad at parsing a lot of effects happening in the same place this has ruined my enjoyment of other games yeah that well. was um deedlet and wonder labyrinth right um deedlet was usually okay about it i i remember i had a problem with it oh okay yeah th this one definitely suffers from that a bit but Part of the gameplay loop is clearing that noise away, yeah. so I, I forgive it a bit more in that case. I don't know. I was thinking more like I, I hit a limit at dead in dead cells at one point of like being able to understand what was happening on the screen. I see. Oh man. I felt like this had some problems with that. I think some of your shots are on a layer above the enemy's shots, which is a little weird. Okay, maybe maybe the crits, which you can occasionally get the crit shot. No, I thought it might be all of your spells, and so like when you get Robin's spell, oh right, it goes above the enemy's shots or something, and makes it a little hard to see while you're using it. Yeah, I ended up not using that spell all that much, but I can see that because you, you basically do what she does and just spam a wave after wave of bullets from a single point. Yeah, and yeah, no, it it doesn't. I felt that it didn't deal enough for its mana cost, and also has the side benefit, in quotes, of also being the same tar color as enemy bullets. It's bad. It's not great. I mean, the enemy bullets are red or green, and your bullets are yellow. Which, eh, that's not a great color for either of those. Yeah, how's, yeah, how's the uh, colorblindness uh, accessibility on that? It's fine. 
It's fine. Okay. I, know, I didn't really have that much of an issue. Okay. Always, always got to check. I mean, I did have issues when there's a lot of things going on, but it wasn't. It wasn't I felt colorblind. It wasn't colorblind. It's his fault. You, uh, even the, even the coneless, uh, or rather, the coneful would have yeah. trouble. I don't know. I definitely benefited from when I adopted the axe heavily. I was like, oh, hey, I can actually understand what's on the screen now. That's why it never left. It was such a good, simplify this for me, please, daddy. Yeah. And also just, I think it was just the highest DPS I'd ever have. It's just really good. Yeah, it's it's pretty good. I was a little disappointed that some of the, I couldn't find a way to use some of the boss spells in ways that were as useful as <laughs> things like the axe. Yeah, they they kind of started the show with a showstopper on that one. Yeah, basically need to like go out of your way just to futz with them. But yeah, the axe, the chain, and the lightning were like a plus. A plus, great job. Great impact. Feels good to use. And then like I don't know, I I really wanted the laser to work. Oh yeah, the I I tried to make the laser work so much. I had the the this dream of like okay, an ambush starts and I'm just going to use the laser and like it's going to mop up one way and I'm going to mop up the other way. No, it doesn't work. Yeah, cuz it faces away from you. So it's always at your back. It shoots away from you, not from where you're aiming, which I felt was not what this card was describing, but I don't know, maybe I just it made it hard to use. Yeah, it's it's just and it also just doesn't deal it doesn't deal enough damage. <laughs> yeah. This is really like, the problem. Maybe it's useful for clearing out guys that die in one hit, and you could just sweep it across them. But that also doesn't happen that often. Yeah, I don't know. Again, I, I do also am firmly of the belief, especially when it comes to like card games, that there needs to be wrong answers in order for the right ones to feel good to use. That's fair. And so like the fact that that was kind of a boss reward kind of sucks. But yeah, there, there are definitely cards in there that I just saw no use case for. Like I think the the rocks was a like a, a shield of like actual like destructible terrain really just got in my way and never anything else. Oh yeah, I was very surprised that none of the shields were ever like things that you could shoot through, but enemies couldn't. Yeah, no, uh, it was it was weird. Yeah, I never managed to use the shield shields well. No, but oh well, yeah, no. Turns out being just aggro and good at the game results in a much better time. Yeah. Not to put you on blast, but you know. Pfft. Oh, yeah, apparently I need to get good. <laughs> it's it's one, of the, one of the best feelings in the world is good. <laughs> but regardless, anything else jump out at you to mention? Other than, I don't know, like I think we just briefly touched on visual styles, very good. Don't need to put too, find a point on that. If you just look up screenshots, you'll kind of know what it's like. But like in motion definitely looks better than Aquaria. <laughs> Not that that's uh, much of a thing, but definitely trades less on ambience and more on, uh, you know, moment to moment Bits, beats of action and like dodging hazards and moving your way through and I don't know I had a very enjoyable time yeah I mean I don't know I didn't hate it I just <laughs> there was definitely parts where I was liking it less than I felt I should when was the last uh, time you like unabashedly really liked a game that we've played unabashedly really like I mean I don't have the order of things I really liked haiku you were yeah you did more than me I think uh Astalon you did describe as being like crack to you. Yes. But yeah, n none of the m more recent ones. I mean, Haiku wasn't that long ago, was it? Yeah, December-ish, January. Can't remember the, when we released these. That's like two ago. That's four or five. <laughs> Fine. Yes. <laughs> I mean, I like I liked Deedlit. Deedlit played well. Deedlit played well, it but... Was, it was short and like wasn't like fully exploring its potential, I felt. Yeah. But... Like I, I really enjoyed the boss battles in Deed Lit. Yeah, that's fair. And you yeah. enjoyed the you, I, you enjoyed the boss battles in this. Since we're talking about all these other games, maybe yeah. we should transition into figuring out where we're putting these on the stack rank. Is where I was kind of going with that. So, hey, Tom, do you have your list up? I do have my list up. Where do you think the Night Witch? ranks amongst the twenty plus games we've played? I'm trying to figure that out. Like I. I I am grump about some things. I I'm also not so grump about other things. <laughs> and but you are the game grump. Yes. So like for me it was kind of a mixed bag. There was things that I felt really worked, things that I I coming into Metroidvania shmup thought would be different, I guess. Yeah. I felt like I spent a lot more time hiding behind terrain and shooting when enemies weren't shooting than I thought I would do. Yeah, that that's kind of the 
change from Toho is that you're not so much dodging and weaving bullets so much as using terrain as your shield and picking your moments. Yeah. So I don't know. The, the problem is I have a cluster of things that I think are just like pretty good in the <laughs> middle and I'm trying to figure out where to put it somewhere in that middle cluster yeah what did what did most remind you of <laughs> where am i putting this i also feel like uh, over the course like over the course of this complaining i feel like i've gone more negative than i actually was while i was playing it what, would you i felt have... like i left the game on a pretty positive note oh i definitely did like i like i think i mentioned like after, when the credit song hit it, it just kind of pulled it everything together and the more i thought about the game the more i thought like yeah maybe i should go back and do all those ambushes got lazy and didn't but like i still think i might maybe one day but for you would you have finished this game if it wasn't for the podcast uh i'm stubborn i probably would have okay but that said i don't know i tend to abandon games because they're long not because uh i'm i don't know i, I mean i guess if i got really frustrated with it they they have to basically be a roguelike that i just don't feel like i'm getting anywhere towards the anything resembling an end of or long for me to abandon yeah yeah and th this one had a pretty brisk pace even if you could get caught on some of the fights so yeah so i think i'm going to put it i don't know all of my answers on where i'm putting it seem pretty arbitrary <laughs> i'm gonna put it between number 13 for me castlevania aria of sorrow and the current number 14 is metroid zero mission wow i'm gonna put it in there but this feels weird <laughs> but everywhere i think about putting it feels weird sure i mean that's a lot lower than i will be so it kind of makes sense i just w wild that zero mission ranks lower i don't know but then also like i put zero mission way higher so damn like it, it's yeah. it's really just above metroid zero mission and then the msx debacles and vaguely not <laughs> metroidvanias so yeah i don't know i was kind of tempted to put it higher i don't know where i'm going i like i, I think i like environmental station alpha more than i liked this I think I like Iconoclasts more than I like this. Yeah. Guacamelee, eh, we're kind of in the like, eh, it had some flaws, but I enjoyed my time with it realm. Sure. I mean, it. you might be convincing me to raise this up further above. Yeah, like, I mean, I found it similar-ish to Iconoclasts, also being an environmental list uh, message while also being concerned with cults of personality. Yeah, it's definitely story, fo like, story is a big draw in this like yeah. iconoclasts where i find a lot of other metroidvanias are the story is usually a pretty flimsy excuse plot yes this one did have like you know stuff to say fun characters definitely didn't overstay its welcome in either regard but there's enough there that it didn't also feel like it was just wasting your time or it, it justified itself yeah you've convinced me i'm now moving it up to just under deed lit and putting it uh, my new number 12 okay. over Metroid Prime. <laughs> I like how I'm just like, oh yeah, no, there are other Metroid games that are worse than this. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly. Even though I, I do think Prime is uh, just king among kings, god among men. <laughs> I don't know. How about you? You sound like you had a lot of fun with this. I did. And that's why I'm like looking at Iconoclast. But it's weird that I'm, I also look at Environmental Station Alpha current number eight and think oh that that thing did a lot right for me as well just being a unique little thing but i don't know i think at the pace of the game how i felt upon its completion i might actually put it above symphony controversial <laughs> under aria so uh, unlike you at new number seven the night witch all right yeah so it's iconic class is number five I still, I think that one's more just, I played it when I was a, a younger, when I wore a younger man's clothes and it was the first <laughs> one. And I kind of appreciated it having a bit more teeth to the subject matter I was tackling, but no, Night Witch was great. Great little game. Had a lot of fun. Really got annoyed at some of those fights, but it was one of those like frustrating, like, but once you beat it, the release had that satisfying edge. It was great. And ask me again in a month, I will be like, Night Witch, pfft. <laughs> bottom 20 for sure i mean but, our list is only 23 games long right now well then we better get so if some it's more. not one of your top three it is the bottom 20 <laughs> quiet you um i assume you would like me to give you our next game yes please do well your wish is my command because next month we'll be playing shantae the oh. genie game for the gbc 
Game Boy Color, a very late release by Way Forward. A late, oh, a late release on the Game Boy. On Color. the Game Boy Color, this was 2002. This was deep into GBA, and it was still being released on the GBC. Yeah, all right. Yeah, I have no idea. Much like Kirby and the Amazing Mirror, there's probably going to be some arguments against its inclusion, but. I am prepared to fuck around and find out, if you are. I know some of them do fit people's definitions of Metroidvania, and some of them don't. I but think the first one does. We gotta start with the first one, obviously. Later ones, because Shantae has had games, I think, somewhat recently. Yeah. Let me see if I have them on my list. Uh, there was one in 2019. Yeah, so... Who, who but knows? I think that one isn't actually technically a Metroidvania because it's level based. Okay. Well, then I don't care about that one. I care about the first one, Shantae. <laughs> and on Shantae, I think we should probably wrap this bad boy up. If you've somehow made it through this entire gargantuan episode and would like to follow us, we are on Facebook, obviously, the Inverted Castle Podcast. Follow us on Twitter at Inverted Castle P. Never forget the P. Or email us at Inverted Castle Podcast at gmail.com uh you want to take us away yeah i'm thomas blight and i'm eric fox don't believe in me believe in the you that believes in me 